Hello. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Happy episode 32. I hope your Monday is going absolutely swell. Um, We're pre-recording this, but you know, every time we sit down for a Monday episode, I don't know about you, but I kind of like mentally put myself after the weekend. Yes. I'm like, what am I going to feel like on Monday? Yep. Talking to future Kristen and Alex, I think those little ladies are probably feeling a lot of fucking FOMO. It was Coachella weekend. Coachella weekend one was this past weekend. And this is the first year ever. I missed 2016. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. Well, for me, at least, it's the first year ever, ever in my life that I have opted out by choice of a festival, yeah. let alone Coachella. Since 2014. Since 24, since I was 18 years old. That's crazy. Nearly 10 years. And this is the first Especially the first Coachella. Coachella is my everything. It's It's like... It's everything. It was such a big part of our like late teens, early twenties characteristic. Our, like, y- our, our young personality. Adulthood. Yes. Our young adulthood. Oh my God. Are we young adults still? You think? No, I was thinking about this today. Like I think we're like medium adults. We're getting old. No, we're <laughs> literally almost 30. We are. This isn't midlife, right? No, God, no. I think midlife is like 50, 60. And maybe we are young adults. Uh, no, I think midlife's technically like 40. Do you think you're going to live till you're 80? Yes. I don't. I think I will. I've ne- no, I've never, uh-uh. I think I'll be really healthy. Like, I think I'm just going to like cruise. Really hope. I don't want to live till I'm that old. Really? 80's not that old. My grandpa's 77. Does that put it in perspective? Yeah. My grandpa's fucking sharp as shit. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, this is not where we're (laughs) supposed to go with this. Coachella, right? It was this past weekend. And this is the first year we've opted out. And um, pre, you know, pre-recording this pre-weekend one. We're, yesterday, I like, I walked in your room and we were just like, dude. What are we doing? What are we doing? (laughs) Why are we not going to Coachella? Why did we not go? We just thought like, oh, we'll save money for the move. Like we just yeah. like weren't kind of, we weren't into it. Should we go to weekend two? Well, I think we're going to experience it a lot differently if we do it this way. Agreed. Yeah. I've been to weekend two one time and Me it too. was the first, there was a year where I went to weekend one and weekend two, like literally drove to Palm Springs, did a festival, came back to LA for like four days and then drove back to Palm Springs and did it all over again. It was awesome. Like it I was don't really think we could, cool. I, I don't think we could hang anymore. Like, Oh, that. I think we could. So weekend two is so much different. It's, um, it really seems like a different festival other than the literal layout and the lineup. But weekend two is like, people aren't there for the after parties, the pre parties, the neon the carnival. Outfits. Right, the outfits, the the press, people aren't there for that. So you literally see just like way more people walking around and just t shirts like and vans and tank tops and just Me, like stage, stage, shit. You would actually see artists, right? Performances and enjoy the food mm-hmm. and like walk around with a beer. Like it's more like festival vibes, whereas I feel like Coachella is event vibes. Yes. Or it's, it's damn near like a the music is an show. afterthought. It really is. Yeah. It's so bizarre. It, I, I do love them both, though. I mean, right. um, we're literally saying how much FOMO we have. But I, I am excited if we go to Weekend 2 to have that really relaxed. Don't give a fuck. And it doesn't have to be work. It's going to feel a lot like our first year there. Um, But today was my last day in my office. It's crazy. Which is, it was so sad, like, leaving my desk. Because, like, obviously during the pandemic, I've been working from home. But my desk was always, like, still there. Mm-hmm. I would go in every once in a while. Like, it was still, I still had access to it. Like, we have so many cool amenities on our um, campus. What are some of them that you're willing to share? Because it is really cool. We have we have a full gym. We have a car wash. <laughs> we have, <laughs> we have um, what else? Like fire ass food, right? Oh my God. Hella cheap. Yeah, but we haven't had that since the pandemic. Oh, they didn't reopen. No. Oh, I didn't know that. Huge cafeteria, such good food and everything's really well priced. Like my my breakfast was $3.25 every day. My 
lunch, I would get like a full sal- salad and a half sandwich. And that was like six bucks. That's like, crazy. yeah. And it's bomb. They have full chefs. I think it was like the cater company was Wolfgang Puck. I remember you saying that. Yeah. Now that, now that I hear that. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't like the restaurant's food. It was just like their catering side. Wow. But the food was fire. Um, yeah, it, the campus is really cool. It's a, I've said this before, it's a fashion company. So we have like stores on site. It was really sad leaving, like Mm. walking it out. I was like this, I'm not going to be back unless we like come to LA to visit at some point. And it like happens to land on a weekday. Right. Which we'll do. Yeah. I could see us coming back and like working a week here just to like visit Leanna, see your new place. Right. Yeah. We'll We'll be here. But, um, so I did that early. Like that was my last day. Today was my last day in office because I got rid of my car. Um, I just drove my car. It was crazy. You've never been able to do this with a lease. Right. They literally are buying back cars because of the, um, low inventory from the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So usually if you give up your lease any earlier than like your lease contract time, you, pay like crazy amount of fees you you pay the rest of your lease is right usually the common thing so if you still have two years left on your lease you're paying 24 months right there right literally up front just to get rid of the car um right now they're literally taking them back they're like buying back vehicles with for like with no fees yep um so i walked in literally signed a piece of paper she was like hold on we gotta take a look at it and appraise it to make sure and i was like fuck like they're gonna find something and not want to buy it back Uh, and then she like looked at it for like two and a half minutes came back inside and she's like okay we're gonna buy it (laughs) i wonder what she's even checking like she's Um, probably just like opening the doors rolling down the windows (laughs) yeah she like wrote down the mileage and then like i have like a little ding on the side of my car she like went up to it and like rubbed it tickled it yeah (laughs) so literally (laughs) <laughs> touched it and then she like walked around and then yeah i came back in so damn i hope mine's that easy I, yeah i literally like called geico i said no moss is it are you no immediately more? yeah thank off. you for the translation by the way <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh um yeah okay Done. that's good to know too I'm i thought uninsured wow gosh we also need to figure out our health insurance and like if oh i guess you're i do that through work yeah but like i just got a new one and then i think i actually have to cancel it because i got it through covered california and it's not valid in new york (laughs) this is like the first time we've or me i've like noticed i've had to like adult me too these past few months my adultness really hit me yes me too 27 like i'm probably gonna have to get a new like banking because i would have like a i'm still on my mom and dad's credit union right (laughs) i have to join an actual bank grow up (laughs) literally um there was another one no little credit firms like that are dope though like they're they're a little mom and pop literally the same i'll call and like auntie jane answers (laughs) she's like hi honey (laughs) it's so convenient but i should probably move to a bigger bank just in case um money isn't real right there's one other thing where i was like holy shit adults have to do this oh i might have to get my own phone plan oh that's normal but right her dad works for a big company like a big phone company yeah my dad works for a phone company so like being on my parent come on (sighs) i'm I'm dying on that plan (laughs) i think they'll kick you off I think it's cheaper because I'm on it. No, it is. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, I don't think no they'll way. kick me off. Oh, then you're good. But you don't think we should have like... Like a landline? No. I do want a landline, actually. Yeah, no, we should. Well, but, but that's those separate. Like $5. You get, it, you get landlines free now with your internet. It's crazy. Yeah. They literally offered me... They're like, do you want it? I'm like, I no. They're I like, can't okay. wait. Call our house phone. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> we give out that number every night. Oh, it's just God. like all you guys oh. calling us. <laughs> her headphones just slipped off her head you want to get another new york phone number i don't know don't you feel like we should have like no it doesn't matter no way okay no way i know so many la people that still have like their hometowns area codes do you think you're gonna get a new york driver's license i think we should for the mems yeah or like just like a new york id yeah we should cool very cool but like 
No new phone number. No, that's that's <laughs> literally for what? That's relocating. That's having to tell everybody you've ever known ever. <laughs> hey, here's my he- new here's number. my new number. Hit my new number. I don't know why I thought that. Your phone works the same. Like, <laughs> you're not gonna lose any reception or anything. But like valid if you thought that. I don't know. You were always valid. Oh, <laughs> you were always. I'll just wait to see if I like settle in New York. <laughs> but even then, like we can have Bay Area. Area. You don't coast. think if you're like you are living in New York with kids and I don't a ever want to change my number if I don't have to. <laughs> it is it has it's locked into so many things. Like that'd be so <laughs> annoying. I think I would. I wish you could just change your area code. Cause I want my phone number. Like I like my phone number. Yeah. Yeah. I wish the area code changed. Automatically. Automatically when you right. go into a new city. Well, like, why do you think sometimes we have to type in one before dialing the area well, code? It's your country code. Every country is a different plus. Okay. Yeah. That's just our country code. Why do we get one? Because we're number <laughs> one. There we go. Just okay. Kidding. What the fuck are we talking we're in about? Last place for sure. <laughs> Um, okay, my song of the day today. I don't think I've sh- I've showed you this, but Josh sent this to me, and it's about a guy who has a crush on a girl in L.A. and he's from the Bay. What? Yeah. Send he, me this. It's so cute. It's called Parallel Parking by Arden Jones. And send me this. It's cute, right? Oh my god, the, it I love that. You. Thank you. Um. Yeah, he sent it to me, and there's a part where he goes, um, like so, like coming down to visit you, like you're in L.A. and I'm in the Bay or something like that. And I was like. Josh is literally us. He's like, I know. Every time I hear it, I think of you. Aww. Cute, huh? Too bad he's not in the Bay. <laughs> <laughs> no, what's even worse is when people are from SAC. You're not from the Bay. You're not from the Bay. Nope. Sorry. I hate to break it to you. That is not the Bay Area. Does Bart go to SAC? Nope. Mm-mm. If- ah, Bart doesn't go to Vallejo. A lot of people argue that Vallejo is not part of the Bay. Vallejo is part of the Bay. Because it's quite literally on the Bay. It touches yes, the Bay. But yes exactly if you touch the water if you surround the bay you're part of the bay because like or i'm not talking tracy thank god that's all i was wondering <laughs> that's all i was wondering <laughs> that's where i draw the line that's where you know what Modesto, when, you're it oh no when you hit tracy when you're driving to the, or when you're driving to from LA. the bay to la when i hit tracy i'm like oh you're, okay uh, i'm free i'm out i'm out of the bay <laughs> like i that's where i'm like oh we're good yep like I'm, I'm on the road. Right. Yeah. Right. There's that a split, off. right? Yep, the There's split. a split to the five. Yes. Right. That's yeah. Five, right. Anyway. Um, what are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm wearing my friend Tessa sweats that she will absolutely never get back. Um, and then these are my MTV socks. Cute, right? Has ever heard of it? <laughs> ever. <laughs> um, my song of the day, all day today, I've been listening to a playlist called nineties love songs. <laughs> I was like pa- packing all my Poshmark <laughs> orders this morning, just like jamming out in my room to them. Um, this is one of my favorites. The song reminds me of my mom. I remember she would sing it while we were on car rides. And I remember her like looking in the back seat, singing it to us. It's Back at One by Brian McKnight. Oh my God. That's such a good song. I think I want it to be my wedding song. I thought about that today. What do you mean? Like your first dance? I think so. Sick. Like it's like a... Like it's like yeah. it's a good first dance. Song. You should have is he still alive? I'm not sure. Who is he? Brian McKnight? Brian, yeah. I'm not sure. Um look. you should see if like you can get a live performance Ooh, of that. Ooh, as your first dance yeah. live performance. Oh. For sure. What do you think his rates are? Okay, wait, hold on. Let's make sure he's here. Available. Uh yeah, oh yeah. He's fifty two. What the oh. fuck? He's chilling. Uh June fifth, nineteen sixty nine. He's from Buffalo, New York. Sick. Okay. Maybe he still lives there. Oh my God. We hang out with him. He's our neighbor. <laughs> we moved to Buffalo. Where is Buffalo? It's so far from New York City. I couldn't tell you where it is. It's like on the west uh, side of New York. You know how New York is like that little sliver and then like really big that way? I don't. R- okay, I don't know what New York looks like. Do, are you ready to freak out? Oh, is it actually going to scare me? You're just going to be like... Huh? Huh? 
I, I don't know what New York. You looks actually like have never seen. Okay, I'm really bad. I'm really bad at geography. You guys Fucking love geography. I, I do too. I I think it's great to know, but it, it agree with me on this. It was not taught enough. It was For not sure. taught enough, and it it should have been mandatory. A, a like a. <laughs> You know what I mean? Do you remember our taxi driver in New York? And we would say, (laughs) (laughs) he was like, he was like, ran out of nowhere. Say any country or any state. I know the capital. We were like, "Uh, sorry, what? He goes, say it. Say it. I know everyone. And we would say like random countries. And he would, he'd be like, oh, that one has two capitals actually. And he literally knew every single he one. He knew but everyone. He did not swear. Also, I wouldn't know if he was wrong. Oh. <laughs> that's probably what he's doing. That's yeah. probably his bit. Yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna try it He's probably someone. like, yeah. That's good. Oh, well, I hope he's right. I don't know. <laughs> what, anyway. What does New York look like? Okay, here. Hold on. Okay, so this is what you always like see as New York, right? But I know that's not all of New York. Like, I'm not ignorant. You know, like, I'm very aware no, I know it's bigger, but look, okay. So it, it like has this tiny sliver. You can kind of see it goes all the way over here. Oh, I didn't know it went that deep. Look, wait, it doesn't not go past. That's Pennsylvania. No, look, you see that line? Um, I was going to the edge. Oh, I could just... oh shit. Yeah. What the fuck? Oh, Buffalo's hella west. See, and it goes all <gasps> north. Oh, and that's where it goes up to Niagara Canada. Falls. Yep. And then it comes back down. What the fuck? And then that's a tiny little. Oh wait, already, right, right there. there. Yeah. Oh my god, New York is huge. <laughs> oh my god, we have to go explore. I wonder, like, what's what's going on out there? Yeah, what's guys? What do we go do in New York outside of what everybody thinks New York is? <laughs> Where? Why did we bring this up? <laughs> um. Oh, Buffalo. Oh, because Brian McKnight. Yes, that's my song of the day. Okay, <laughs> what well, I'm wearing, <laughs> my fuzzy white socks. And then these are like some of the most comfortable black sweats, you guys. I got them from Target. I got them from the guy section. Super soft. Um, For Halloween, we were the Spring Breakers. Uh, the movie with like Selena Gomez and Vanessa Hudgens. Um, and there's a scene where they have a ski mask. And they wear these sweats that say DTF on the butt in like these silver letters. So we ironed them on these sweats for Halloween, but I don't want to get rid of them because they're so comfortable. And so now you just walk around with DTF sweats. Yes. On. Every time I just want to wear them, I forget. And one time I went grocery shopping with them <gasps> on my fucking ass. No. Yes. Because I was like, oh, cute, like black sweats. And I had like a little crop top and like cute sneakers with like cute socks and like a beanie, like cute. It's a DTF walk around Trader Joe's. That's the funniest thing I've ever heard. Surprised I didn't meet my husband. Right. I'm really surprised. Okay. Okay. We have quite an episode for you. Before we get started, let's take a break for our sponsors. Our first sponsor for today's episode is Function of Beauty. You guys have heard us talk about them before. What's really cool is that you get to customize their formulas because we all have like our dream hair texture. So they really work with like what you have to get it to where you want it. Yeah. And they're also vegan and cruelty free, amazing, which is nice when it's both. Right. And they never use parabens or sulfates. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. You also have the option to be completely silicone free. That's good. Cause that shit's not good for your hair. Mm-hmm. So if you guys want to check them out, go take their online quiz, go through, customize all your different hair care needs. You can also pick your color and your scents. Their scents are amazing. Mm-hmm. This podcast is also sponsored by better help. So the moves coming up. It's fun. It's I'm really, really excited to start our new life somewhere else. But I feel like you can agree with me that we're low key, both kind of stressed about yeah. it. It's getting a little realistic. Right. Like we were saying, all the adult things are coming in, all the responsibilities and dealing with a stress about your future on top of the stress of your present right now. It's a whole other type of anxiety because we're stressing on closing chapters in L.A. while opening a new one across the country, like double stress. It's a lot on the body. We cannot let it get the best of us. Yeah, I feel like the more and more I start to feel this moving stress, it's uh, it's really affecting my sleep. Oh, yeah. Which in turn, like if I don't get enough sleep, my next day is even more stressful. So like on top of the stresses of 
moving on top of everyday stress. I'm also stressed because I'm not because I'm stressed. And then you're stressed because you're not sleeping. Stress on stressception. I don't like this word. It's starting to sound <laughs> like it's not a word anymore. Right. Well, a great resource to help tackle and at least manage that stress is BetterHelp. BetterHelp is online therapy done in the comfort of your own home, which takes away that stress of mm-hmm. going out into the world. Because <laughs> that's stressful. <laughs> but BetterHelp's different. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. And like I was saying, it's much more affordable than in-person therapy. Give it a try and see if online therapy can help lower your stress. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Advice listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash advice. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash advice. Thanks, Thanks BetterHelp. Help. Oh, I forgot to mention, we cut the tag off the pillow. Oh, yes. A couple of you guys noticed that the tag was really long and I have a habit of like, Sitting with it and like playing with the tag. Oh. It was probably annoying. It was probably making noise in the back. Maybe. Um, yeah, so I cut it off. So he's, oh, he doesn't have a tail. Yeah, he feels naked. Do you think it hurt? Probably. Also, our flower that. pillow is ripping. <laughs> what, how could it be ripping? Actually, I know why. Remember Chris? Yeah. He, pu- he tore the tag off. He pulled the tag off and it busted the seam. It's okay. We've been saying we're going to do like a full new set for season three. So, but honestly, I'm probably still I'm so excited these. for that. No, I'm so excited to like get into that creative process. Yes. Which is our new set. I'm going to start making mock-ups. Yeah. Let's like start thinking now. So we're not like bottlenecking. Right. Cause I, I don't want to take that big of a break. No, literally between... just to move. Right. When's our last episode? But of, I do want to, we've had like a, uh, I don't know. We'll think about that. We'll think about it. Yep. But we've had a lot of like, random like brainstorming session sessions for how we're going to come back. Like we've done photo shoots. Um, I want to get visual this time. Like yeah. I want to do like video yeah. little something, something we need like an intro song. I yeah. want to get that. Or even like an intro screen, like some type of graphic there. Yep. Like we have a lot of like standards for season three. Yes. I hope you guys do too. Actually, don't just no, keep, please them don't. keep your standards <laughs> low. Please don't. Keep your standards low down here, guys. Be um, humble. I was actually talking to my coworker today and we were talking about like our resumes and like and our portfolios. Gotcha. And she was like, um, any side projects like that you're working on? Like, I want to see them, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh my God, I don't have any side projects. And she was like, dude, you have a full podcast. You And like, she was like, you did the creative for it. Yeah. You do the creative for everything. And I was like, oh, it was like a, a light bulb of imposter syndrome. Yep. That like, no, this is just still like a fun little thing that we do. It's not a oh. project. And you also make thumbnails for every single one of our right. videos. Every single thumbnail you guys see Alex fully makes. She fully makes a thumbnail. So hello. Right. Like you're making thumbnails with like, Certain colors that will catch people's eyes, certain fonts that will catch, like, that is your job. Congrats. (laughs) Thanks. But it was like, I was like, oh, I do have something going on. (laughs) I am busy. (laughs) Sometimes I feel like I'm just not doing enough. That's capitalism. Yes. Yeah. It really be, it'd be doing that. Mm -hmm. But you are doing enough. You're waking up and you're feeding your body and you're making people smile Aww. Like that's a lot. Yeah. That's, that's what we're here to do. Right. All the other shit is just but, fake. So yeah. So it not only did it make me realize that like, okay, we're all like doing shit, but it made me really excited for like all the creative part of it. Like it made me want yeah. to like sit down and like think of new shit for the set. And yep. that's fun. I'm ready but to like, be like re-inspired by it. Yes. Cause that was a big thing when we were thinking about the set in the first place um, one of my old managers asked, uh, what will you feel inspired sitting on and talking to Alex? And that was when we were going back and forth with having a table and chairs versus a bed. And I was like, oh my God, you're right. Like, like I don't want to sit and talk to Alex at the table on a, like, in between white us. table with a plant behind us. No, literally. We would never. I'd be like, what are, should we go? Should we sit on the floor? Right. <laughs> literally. I'd be like, should we stand? Right. I'd rather stand. Ooh, a standing podcast. <laughs> Does hot ones stand? No, they sit. 
a standing podcast. Why do I feel like Matt King would do that? No, 100%. Like, who and a half would, like, do a season of, like, we're going to standing desk. You know what? Yes. Standing <laughs> desk. Not me putting my joint out on our bed frame. Wait, you have something in your tooth. Of course I do. <laughs> if you can't already tell, I'm high as a kite. Yeah, we're high. I feel like I have a smile stuck on my face. You don't. I'm not like this. Ew. No, I trust that's, me. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> that's how I feel internally. What? That's kind of good. No. Oh. Scary. Damn. Yeah. Well, we smoked. Thought it'd be a good idea because. Um, oh, yeah. No, it's I'm happy. Okay. That's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> all that matters. Um, Wednesday's 420. If you can't already tell by the date. April 20th. Uh, Hitler's <laughs> birthday. No. Yeah. Crazy, huh? Super weird. Now I feel like I don't want to celebrate. Oh, but it's, we're not celebrating his birthday. <laughs> right. It just happens to fall on the date. Okay. So yeah, we just played around with the devil's lettuce a little bit. Um, and to celebrate 420, not Hitler's birthday. Not Hitler's birthday. Fuck that guy. Yeah. Um, and we're going to go through a couple of Reddit threads. Oh my God. Yes. Just some like high idea shit. Um, there's one that I found that was explain things to me like I'm five. And it Such like explains thread. like really good physics things. So that'd be fun to go through. Another little Reddit form. Is it a Reddit thread? A Reddit f- sub subreddit? Subreddit. Another subreddit I found is um it's I didn't find it. It's definitely a very well known one, but it's shower thoughts. So I don't know. Every time I'm laying up in bed hella high at night, this is the type of shit I like to go read. I like to go watch like weird documentaries and tickle my brain, really. Do you remember the website? Should we just like bounce back and forth? Yeah. Okay. My first one is an explain like I'm five. If blood continuously flows throughout the body, what happens to the blood that flows down a vein where a limb was amputated? Okay. And someone wrote in. Oh, because it's like the end of the vein. Right. Like it can't like reverse. Where do they connect the end of the veins? I didn't even think about. Okay. What's the answer? Okay. A, this person said, and this was upvoted the most. Okay. A racetrack is oversimplified. More realistically, all the veins, arteries, capillaries, etc., are like a giant neighborhood, not strictly a circle with only one way to do it. So you have a fleet of male people delivering to all those houses. And if a section of the neighborhood gets cut off, all the packages can still be delivered to all the houses that haven't been cut off via all the other connecting streets. The main supply and return veins and arteries have hundreds of thousands of branches where blood can flow between those main lines. The vascular system is the single most redundant system in basically every creature that has one. Wow. So it's like... The neighborhood makes sense. Yep. It's just like... There's never just one route. I I always thought of like a racetrack. When they said yep. racetrack, that's exactly like so there's loops. It went one way, one speed the whole time. Yeah. Like constant traffic. Yep. One direction, only one way to get there. One direction. Harry Styles. In my veins. <laughs> Thanks. Um That's crazy. That's so weird. Uh thinking about blood in my veins. I, I'm okay with seeing blood, but thinking about how it moves through my body. Oh, it makes me like cold. It makes me just like feel like tingly like you know the tingly you get when you can't make a fist in the morning because you're too weak yeah that type of tingly but all over my body yep like tickly i was gonna read shower thoughts but shower thoughts are just kind of like these one liners and i feel like i'm more interested in like learning things so i think this one will just read the explain like i'm five and then if you guys want a shower thoughts episode we could totally do that too um but i just pulled up the subreddit And as I was pulling it up, you cleared your throat. So I stopped because it says, how do clearing throats actually clear our throats? Ooh, this one's freaky. Okay. um, Like you did, I'm just going to read the like top answer. Okay. Phlegm and mucus is normally a layer of protection in our lungs and breathing tubes. But when we are, when we are ill, our bodies often produce too much of it. It can collect in the throat and around the vocal cords which are the tiny folds of tissue that vibrate together when we speak and sing. Coughing or throat clearing clearing is basically slamming the vocal (gasps) cords together so they push the excess mucus away and back up into the mouth so it can be either spat out or swallowed down. Um, And it gets rid of, you get rid of 
you sorry you get what oh and got rid of using our stomach juices so it generally feels good to get rid of it but unfortunately until we get better more mucus quickly arrives to take its place and that's why we keep coughing oh my god Um, i wish like science explained this to us when we were kids there are so many things that I wish we knew. Like, think about, like, I don't think I would have cared about that as a kid. Like, how it works. Right. Like, really? if you learn it all then, then what are you going to learn now? I don't know. But, like, I guess more simply, like, they're so focused on, like, high school science is so focused on vocabulary words mm-hmm. and the cell. Shit that, like, isn't, like valuable i don't know but that's probably to me because i fucking hated science yeah but like this is knowledge that i could pass on yeah. i could not pass on the C- chapter three vocab words nope none of that Does that makes sense yes but aren't the vocab words just to build our vocab that's so cool this is something that i'm gonna think about now every time i have a sore throat or yes. I, I have too much mucus oh Maybe I don't want to know God. this. <laughs> Maybe like, I shouldn't know this. Oh, I'm going to be like, right. Alex, I need to go to the ER. <laughs> my throat lining is. <laughs> my mucus. Okay. My next one. If you were fed all necessary nutrients intravenously for a long period and no longer needed to eat, what would happen to the stomach? <gasps> Ew. Ew. What would happen? Okay. This also, this sounds like, remember when we were talking about podcasts and I was telling you about flash forward, the, how I was they just would like say that that sounds like it. This sounds like it would be an episode. Yeah. Uh, we should listen to an episode. We really should. Okay. This is the most upvoted answer. Okay. Your stomach would shrink and your di- digestive system would slowly shut down. You would develop problems and complications related to your gastrointestinal tract shutting down. I already got that. Intravenous, <laughs> intravenous, uh, nutrition is not a long-term nutrition solution. If a person can't eat for a long time, enteral feed is the preferred method of feeding. I don't know what that means. Is through a tube, right? Enteral. I'll look it up. Go on. Um, even if you were intravenously fed, you would still feel the hunger. Oh, so even with no stomach, you could still get hungry? Because it's like your brain, right? And like... Like signals that nothing's down there. Right um and oh, then it's um it's iv feeding oh it's through okay. your veins got you uh from what i understand the process of restarting the digestive system is not fun for anyone involved smelly messy and painful not to mention one of the primary treatments is literally putting another person's poop into the patient huh maybe to get your intestines going and like get those bacteria. yeah whoa what i didn't even know this was a thing i didn't even I know people had to do that yeah whoa what is that because like imagine your your intestines aren't working for like say a month yeah they're, they're gonna not, sh- reserve that energy yeah and then you need to fire it back up holy shit oh my god does anybody have any like experience with this that they're comfortable whoa. sharing like i'd love to know more wow that's fucking advanced. Yeah. Oh my God. Someone commented on it and said, I fasted for 37 days once, and this is fairly accurate. No real pain, though. A lot of sweat, grumbling, and gas. 37 days. I didn't even know that was humanly possible. Yeah. I thought you you could do, you could do like two weeks without food and then like four days without water. Right. That's crazy. We need so much water. Oh my God. I used to go four days without water for four all the time. No water. Not a sip. Yeah. But you were drinking other liquids. Yeah. I think that's what it is. Like four days with like nothing. Nothing. No liquids. Damn. I want to know more about this. Like does anyone have experienced that? This is like the part of me that wishes I was a doctor because like I I would geek out about all this shit. Someone said the old fecal transplant. One man's trash is another man's (gasps) treasure. Wait, that's so good. <laughs> Love that. Okay, we took a quick weed break and we got some snacks. I got a Pedialyte pop. <laughs> Just like an auto pop where it like hydrates you. But doesn't it make your like throat like sometimes? It's just my my um your mucus. My mucus going out my <laughs> Thanks. Um I have here some organic mango halves. 
They're dried mango. Did I say that? No, but those were twelve ninety nine at checkout at Whole Foods. Oh my god! And I bought them like and, an idiot. And they're so good. And I'm for sure you didn't have. No. <laughs> okay, my next one. I feel like this one's gonna be really trippy. Also, you know when you eat cold things and your tongue gets numb and you feel like you're talking slow. Yes, That's like it's what's all big right and now. swollen. Yes. Um. Okay. What do scientists mean when they say the universe is expanding? Um, the question proceeds with, is it like moving a fence row after you've purchased a land adjacent to yours or something else is new space and time being created top vote. They mean the space between distant galaxies is expanding and it's not oh. caused by the galaxies themselves moving. People commonly misunderstand and think everything in the universe is moving away from everything else, but this isn't true over quote shorter distances gravity wins out over expansion but at longer distances those greater than galaxy clusters expansions wins out what does that mean i don't know this isn't explaining like yeah. in five yeah right i i'm five and i don't know what you're saying no nope. okay i'm gonna just keep reading it okay at far enough distances the universe is expanding away at a faster speed of light. So do, is it just meaning that things are moving farther away from each other quick, quicker than they're like going into each other? This is hurting my brain. I don't get it. Okay. I'm going to keep reading. Oh, um, <laughs> this is true for any point. Every port, every point is expanding away from distant points. New space isn't being created. It's just expanding. So it's, the space is already there. The space is already there. It's just like we're just getting farther away from each other. Oh, like we're all in a room. This is how they should have explained it if I'm even getting it right. If we're all in a room huddled up in the middle, we're just slowly all getting into our six feet social distancing yes. circles. I think. But I'm probably wrong. That sounds this was right. stupid. Yeah, I didn't like that one. <sighs> but like, not not like that you chose it i no, didn't yeah. like that the, how they answered it yeah the, the person said wow your exclamation made so much sense thank you so much so shy. no it didn't <laughs> this is my next one why is the steepness between the plane takeoff and the plane landing different to each other whoa like why can we go higher nose up but like can't nose dive right like really should have. okay let's see okay so when landing the descent has to be a careful balance between losing speed and altitude. Mm. But doing so in such a way that the plane still has enough lift to remain in the air, but then contact the ground gently enough to not damage the aircraft or its passengers. It's pretty complicated to take something that heavy and have it safely transition from a thing flying th fast through the air to a thing that is on the ground and not flying at all without damaging anything. When taking off, they want to reach cruising altitude and clear the airspace around the airport as quickly as possible. That's where the traffic is. So it's best to clear that area quickly. There's also better fuel e efficiency once they're at altitude and cruising speed. Okay. So. <sighs> it's just like a safety thing. No, but the part that tripped me up is the fact that the traffic of airplanes is only at the airports. at a certain level mm -hmm. and not up in the sky i always wonder that like why don't i see other planes why don't i see other planes when i'm in the sky i've never seen another plane when i'm in the sky when i'm landing i will but it's because we he just left yeah. the airport i don't know and they're all up there right like at the same time so many planes a day like how is it how have i never and like routes are pretty close to each other right, right? like if I you think, think of, like if you think of a flight that's that leaves sfo or even oh my god think about all the flights that land into oakland and sfo oakland and sfo are right across the bay from each other right there's so many planes in and out of their landing all day they have to be two at least have to be going in the same direction right why do we not see them in the sky i need an answer i what need the so fuck somebody please comment and help us I don't fucking know. Okay. But back to this one, they also commented and said, 
or in a more explain like I'm five fashion, when the plane is landing, it's traveling toward the ground. Hitting the ground hard hurts, both the plane and maybe the passengers. So we do it slowly and gently. When the plane is taking off, it's going upwards towards the air. So there's nothing to hit. So we can go up as fast as the plane allows or as fast as it is still comfortable for the passengers. Damn, so we're not even going our top speed? So it's all about speed and altitude. Uh Getting to a specific altitude, like, at the perfect sweet spot. And because, like, it can hurt us and our ears. And, like, like humans can't. How did they test that? How did they test that and find? That's crazy. Why did you ask that? Now I'm, like, I want to give you an answer. Oh, the last one. Do you want it? Let's split it. It's the last mango, guys. Should we just keep splitting it? Mm, that's a lot of fingers. <laughs> oh, there we go. Cheers. Oh my god, that's a perfect line. The tear. You got the bigger one. This no, mine's junky. My birthday just happened. <laughs> my birthday's coming up. Explain to me like I'm five and we're eating <laughs> snackies. <laughs> okay, this one's kind of cool. I feel like you'll appreciate this, Alex. Why do we need uppercase and lowercase letters? Mm. Is one case not sufficient? And this is the origin. In the original Greek and Latin alphabets, all letters were written uppercase. However, when people wrote quickly using a pen, they would accidentally soften and round the certain letters, forming a lowercase version. Mm. There was no actual difference between uppercase and lowercase letters, grammatically speaking. They were seen as the same thing, just written either formally or sloppily. Over time, this sloppy handwriting became more common and was seen as the norm for written text. However, in Old English and Germanic texts, people would still use the formal uppercase lettering for certain words that were deemed important, like names Mm. and nouns. As writing progressed, these uppercase letters were used to help the eyes read text more easily. Capital letters at the start of the sentence helped the eye to distinguish the breaks in text and improve the flow of reading. So that's why we have two cases today. It started as all caps, <laughs> all caps, <laughs> started as all cap. Uh, sloppy handwriting led to lowercase becoming the norm. Capital letters were then repurposed to distinguish important words and to help the eye read more easily. Whoa. This is my favorite one. This is so cool to me. I never knew that. Um, Have you ever like seen those sentences where the first and the last letter remain the same, but the middle letters are jumbled up and like our eye Vitamin can still. Their labels used to do that. No, they did not. <laughs> They're smart water. One of them. No, it was vitamin oh. water. They, yeah. You don't remember that campaign back in like no. probably like 2009, 2008 and all the vitamin waters. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but what, no, you, yeah. you were just explaining that really cool like text thing. And you could still read the sentence because of the first and the last letters. Yep. And so the paragraph says that whole definition, but written in the way <gasps> that it's explaining. Let me try and pull it up. Okay, I found it. It was the Focus Kiwi Strawberry label. Um, I don't think they have it anymore because it. I had to scroll to like old labels. Oh, wow. So I don't think they do it anymore. It's kind of grainy, but... Um, yeah, oh. it pretty much just says like, do you know that the brain, can you read it? Yeah. Read it out loud. Did you know that it doesn't matter what order the letters of a word are in? The only important thing is that the first and last letters are in the correct position. Unfortunately, that's not the case for everything in life. Sometimes the in-between stuff matters. Imagine if you only put on your hat and shoes before going out. That's why we made this product. <laughs> it has vitamin A, which helps maintain some, some weird like, I don't know that word. Can I see it? Oh, eyesight. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so take a sip. No, really. Take a sip. We're waiting there. Now you have a bit more focus. I so wish they cool. Yeah, that's really cool. I wish they called out. Oh, by the way, you've been reading like like it's obvious. But right now, look at the label. Like, right. Or now read this again. Right. Spot the difference or something like that. Yeah, that's so cool. It's such a creative like marketing that. thing. That's cool. Yeah, I'll put um, I'll post this on like our Instagram so you guys can read it, too. Okay, how is nothing, nothing? For example, space, space just consists of nothing. That's why you can't hear sound in space. But how is there just nothing there? Shouldn't there be something filling it up? Like the nothing is something. Right, and why can't we see it when we sit clear? And like, how do we even know what clear is? I was going to say, even calling it clear is something. Yeah. Nothing is nothing. Nothing is something. Glass. 
we want to say it's clear, but it's not clear. So if what's we, our threshold of clear? If we are aware of something, it's something. Yeah. If it's nothing, we're unaware of it. Right? Like we haven't discovered it. Like we're not, it's not, if we're not. Yeah. If it, it's not in our consciousness, it's nothing. But it's there. So it's something. But if we're, but if we're acknowledging it right now, then it's something. I hope that makes sense to somebody. I hope I'm like, kind of. How is nothing nothing? It's it will never be nothing. Do you know what I mean though? As soon as you say it, now it's, it's no longer yeah. Yep, it's in your consciousness. You've made it something. Yep. By talking about it. Nothing is So nothing will ever be nothing because yeah. every time I try and think of a nothing, it's now a something. Yep, exactly. <laughs> I will die with that. I I'll now I now hill. have an opinion about that that I never had before. So next time someone says, "Ah, oh, it's nothing," say, "Uh, wrong." Wrong. It's eh. very well something. Yeah. Guess what? Because you just made it something, and then I stress them <laughs> and out. And then you fight. No, literally, that's how a fight. <laughs> and then you run it done. One of us has to die. You duel it out. <laughs> Okay, I found my next one. This one I've always wanted to know, and I'm Ooh. so glad I have this answer. Touch screens. Ooh. How the fuck do you co- touch screens work? Uh, top comment, or the rest of that question, let me read it. How does my phone know where I'm touching? I can get the same response where I touch whether I've scrolled up or down. Um, top comment. You know what happens when you lick a 9-volt battery? Electricity flows from one terminal to the other side of your tongue. Now imagine your screen has a thousand million nine volt batteries organized in a grid and your finger is like your tongue. Each press it like it's connecting the terminals on the battery and the device can detect which battery is being pressed at that moment by measuring the current, which gives it a precise location of the touch. This is drastically simplified and the analogy breaks down if we go further, but you're only five. Do you care? <laughs> Someone said, hey, just because I'm five doesn't mean I'm not curious. No. <laughs> Very oh, cool, though. Five. No um, shot. <laughs> Never really had any time for that. How <laughs> can you like reach the computer? <laughs> five. You don't know how to use a touch screen? Yeah, no way. Um, whoa. <sighs> like, I thought it was just like pressure. It, well, it is. But it's like a magnetic. And it's like your skin. That's why, like, when you do it with gloves on, it doesn't necessarily oh, work. Oh, like it's something with, like, the conductivity. Look at that. Little word. Like I'm doing. Yeah, that sounds right. Conductivity. That sounds. That sounds so, so right. So good. That was <laughs> word of the day. We need to start having those. Oh, no, we don't. We don't need any more things in the day that we can't <laughs> keep up with. Okay, sorry. There's another comment. This is so cool. Um, and they kind of go a little bit deeper. There are different kinds of touch screens. Most phones and tablets these days use a capacitive touch screen. This kind of touch screen has a grid of conductive wires under a thin non-conductive layer. The wires have a small electric charge running through them, which changes a bit when something electrically conductive, like your finger, gets near them. So you were right. Yeah. The, what do you call it? Conductivity. Compactive... Touch screens are good for multi-touch and work well with fingertips, but they aren't very precise for things like drawing or writing. Older touch screens use resistive technology. There are two grids of wires separated by a small space. When the touch screen is pressed, the layers squeeze together and a short circuit forms at the touch point. The device is able to determine where the touch is based on the resistance of the wires around it. Resistive touch screens are not multi-touch and work best with hard sharp stylus things rather than a large fingertip i was gonna say like you know like our old, ds our old ds and like our old credit card they're like our old credit card things where Machines. you sign yeah and it's like you press down the point and the magnetic current like comes together yeah like you see it yeah wow it's the same thing oh my god this, this is, is this is so fucking cool uh the next one is called emr electromagnetic touch These screens are used in tablets for high precision work. They are often used by artists. You can tell these these screens because they use a special stylus. EMR touches, uh, sorry, EMR touch screens use a grid of antenna wires embedded in the screen. Oh, wow. 
So it's like in the glass. Yeah. The pen contains its own antenna, which interacts with the weak signals being broadcasted by the screen. What the fuck? <laughs> Depending on which antennas in the screen are interacting with the antenna on the pen, the pen can also include extra features like tilt detection, pressure, pressure sensitivity, or even a few buttons. EMR screens are often combined with cap- capactive or capacitive. That's the word. I said capactive. Capacitive? Capacitive. I'm- C A P A I T I V E. That's capacitive. Yeah. And I've been saying compactive. Oh, it's okay. Jail. Um, <laughs> so you can use your finger for imprecise work and the stylus for precise work. Okay. So it combines those two technologies. Holy in shit. Tablets. Um, these are things like iPads. Duh. Lastly, there are light based touchscreens. These usually are used on big touchscreens, those of like big TV screens. They work by having a glass layer on top of the regular screen and the light is shown through this layer, usually infrared light. So to be visible to the, so to be invisible to the user, when you press your finger against the layer, your finger glows during to the, due to the light traveling within the screen, a camera embedded in the screen detects the glowing spots and translates it into touch information. No shot. Your finger, that infrared reflects back on your little finger and literally creates fucking Tinkerbell. And it like, that's crazy. Also, the, what the, the response is, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's all we, the guy said. Like, he just needed that answer. This is why you learn um, science. Right. This is why you do your vocab test. And you learn science. Right, 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 right. This is Who, the coolest thing I've ever learned. Fucking, your touchscreen's a magnetic force. I am a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> Thanks, Steve Jobs. Yep. Yeah. I don't think he was like the touchscreen guy. No, but like, he he brought us the concept. He did a lot. Yeah. He did do a lot, that guy. He did a lot. Also, okay, I went to like the top Pay, like the top one top voted ones of all time oh my god so these are really good this one was four years ago it has thirty three thousand upvotes how come you can be falling asleep watching tv and then wide awake when you go to bed five minutes later yeah like you like, got you that know, reset okay so we've definitely all been there i do it every night yes um here's the actual answer the brain is like a group of people talking to each other. When you're watching TV, the part of your brain that watches TV says, shut up, guys, I'm watching TV. So you can focus without thinking about cake or math. As a result, the others sit silent, grow bored, and fall asleep until only the TV watcher part of the brain is left. Left by himself, he too gets bored and falls asleep. When you're in bed, assuming you aren't counting sheep or something, the entire brain is kind of in free time mode, and any part of the brain can speak up if it wants to. They start talking to each other, and even if one of them starts to drift to sleep, the others wake it up, either by deliberately talking to the sleepy heads or just being no- noisy. Eventually, more and more of the parts of the brain fall asleep from sheer exhaustion, no matter how loud the others are, and eventually the last one passes out and you're asleep. But, like, why? Holy shit. Well, because if one is, if one part of your brain is still actively working... They're going to stay awake even if the others go to sleep. But if you're not doing anything, each part of your brain is like, oh, free time. And they're all talking to each other until they all get exhausted at once. None of them lets the other part goes to sleep. I think part of my adult brain still wants a further answer, but this is a five-year-old explanation. This is such a good explanation. I get it. I get it. No, I mean, it completely broke it down, but like, I want to know like, w- like the chemicals, the chemicals. Yeah. Um, someone said, indeed, I am at an eight and understood that perfectly. <laughs> someone else said, this makes sense, but now I want an E L I. Oh, explain. Like I am a neuro neuropsych undergrad. Yes. Is okay, there any basis I- for this explanation or is it just a nice parable? Everybody thinks is cute. Right. Okay. I did some neuro classes during college. Actually, I took four neuro courses. One thing I can remember is that the brain activity while watching TV is very slow, almost as low as sleeping. That explains why when you watch a good documentary, a day or two later, you don't remember much in opposition to reading a book. The other thing that comes to mind is the anxiety problem we have in our uh, 
North American society. Right. The best way to counter anxiety thoughts is by being here and now. That means living the moment and not thinking about future or past. While you watch TV and are brain dead, you're kind of dead here and now then you go to bed and start thinking about tomorrow's work to do yesterday's things that you fucked up etc that brings anxiety and stimulates your sympathetic system that is the one that activates your whole body if a tiger is after you now try to sleep with the body scared to die this is a gross vulgar vulgarization but if anyone wants more detail free feel, free feel free to ask FYI, I'm a psychology graduate and I'm working with teenagers under government protection as an educator. Sick. Holy teenagers shit. under government protection. What? Why That's are they under- so cool. Yeah. Whoa. Um, very cool. I very good this. explanation. Yeah. Yeah. Like if your brain's th- like present, there's so much to think about. You're not going to fall asleep. But if you go brain dead watching TV, brain dead in air quotes. Right. Uh, watching tv you're like you're so low energy you're that like under stimulated yeah that's why like even when we're like if we're on like the fifth round of shanghai rummy we're all kind of like mm. yeah because you're just under stimulated but you're like you're still doing something because you can argue that the less that you do like laying in bed doing nothing that's when your mind starts to wander Right. So but like you no need to needed. Yeah. But you need like a tiny bit of simulation to like literally tire you out. Yeah. But like do nothing to brain to fire off signals in your brain. But like middle ground. Yep. I mean, that's why it can be so hard to fall asleep is finding a middle ground of anything is hard. So you're kind of like toggling it back and forth. Yeah. Shutting up your thoughts, but not too much because then they come back like and that's how you fall asleep. That's crazy. Every time we all wake up, me and Leanna come down in the kitchen. Every morning I think this. Weird. I haven't seen these ladies in about 10 hours. We were all just like low-key sedated for 10 hours and didn't talk to each other. And we were laying on sacks and we just like recharged and it's like a new day. I think about that a lot. Literally just like not moving and like slow breathing. Not talking for 10 hours. We don't drink water. We don't he if you don't get up like we didn't go anywhere we didn't go anywhere we did nothing for the past eight to ten hours every night what is it you sleep like 35 years of your life i don't know but it's one third of your life i know that that's okay i guess okay. that tracks yeah, yeah like 25 35 years wait i think it was 25 25 when did we just read this i don't know it seems like such a i feel like it was like just last episode oh no it was a talking point for me in a brand deal. Oh, <laughs> that was it. It was for the Brooklyn and sheets. And yeah, it was one third of your life. Sick. Fuck. That's gross. You're asleep for a long time. Okay. This is going to be my last one, but I'm going to read. I'm actually going to read two because one of them is kind of short, but it's something that I've always thought about that I need an answer to. How can restaurants leave ketchup and mustard out all day, but the bottles you buy in store say refrigerate after opening. Oh, I've always thought about that. I'm like, they're always they're out, always out. In and those red things. And they're never cold when you get And they them. probably stay out all night. 100%. But this says um, ketchup and mustard left at room temp will last for weeks if there's uh, before there's any spoilage at all. Restaurants can go through a bottle a day. There's very oh. little risk of spoiling. I never thought about how much they Usage. go through. They're probably swapping those out every two days yeah and then a lot of people just also um follow with like how they both have a lot of vinegar and salt and those are just natural preservatives as is so these things don't spoil the same that like a yogurt would so like why do we put them in the fridge because i guess we don't use them as often right because we're ours are in there for fuck i mean your ketchup our in mustard there. has been in there probably since we moved in easily and we still use it every day <laughs> no i went through so That's much of our crazy. sauce our sauces we had guys we had <laughs> dressing in our fucking refrigerator from february 2021 sauces are just things that like you'll always have it i will always be there same i feel like growing up we never threw that you, shit away look at all the sauces like oh my god <laughs> like my parents still probably have the same ketchup that i grew up with okay this is my actual last one though. okay if humans breathe in oxygen and exhale CO2, then why does mouth to mouth resuscitation work? Because you're blowing the oxygen into their, like directly into their lungs. But you blow out CO2. Uh, you don't blow out oxygen. 
you're moving the oxygen mo- molecules. I was gonna say I feel like it's it's more, it's more about like expanding. the pressure. Yeah, yeah. It's allowing it's getting you the to muscle. It's firing those muscles back up. Right. Okay. Let's see what it says. Let's see what it says. Oh my god, I can't believe we're doctors. <laughs> um. Okay. Top answer. Whoa, this one has five awards. It says. Whoa. Who, who is on the panel? The award team. <laughs> um okay it says we don't just breathe in oxygen and breathe out co2 it's a mix of gases the air we are used to breathing in only contains 21 percent oxygen we breathe out about 16 percent oxygen that's still enough to keep someone oxygenated for a while oh why does oxygenated not sound like a right no, word that's not right that's for sure wrong <laughs> no it's probably right <laughs> and then a couple more of the comments say we're also helping them to breathe out the CO2. Mm. The feeling of needing to breathe is stimulated by the increase in CO2 in the blood, not the lack of oxygen. That's so weird. I never knew that. I always thought it was because I didn't have air. It's because you have too much CO2 in your blood. Whoa. <gasps> oh my God. Ew. Everything's fucking weird. Okay. The biggest what? and most important thing you're doing is moving oxygenated blood into the organs and tissues. While help is on the way, keeping everything alive and the paramedics can take care over once they get there. If you just do chest compressions and don't do the rescue breaths, it will still work, just not as long. Oh, I never knew that. This is why the most important thing to do before CPR is looking at someone in the crowd, pointing at them and saying, bl- saying if you know your name, um, hey, you in the red hat, call 911 now. Don't let everyone assume someone else called whoa i love that rule that's true do you, are you cpr certified no but i feel like we should be let's just get it let's just get it seriously this is like a sign yeah why aren't we all why isn't it like getting why your isn't license? it taught in pe it is is it yeah we, oh. have, we had one course <laughs> <laughs> but but we didn't get we, certified right that's what i'm saying like, right like i think i i give do us know the real how to test. do it i think i do know how to do it monica showed me monica's cp certified on babies I'm sure she has to be, right? No. Oh. She not just, for Ollie? <laughs> no, but she did get it because she used to work at the YMCA. According to 100 people <laughs> on Family Feud. <laughs> An audience. I would love to go on Family Feud one day. Oh, my God. I'd love to go on a game show like that. and like Let's just sign up. Can the we wear, like, we a chiffon to- button up? Like, the shit they wear? I want to be on... Um, What show would you be on? Deal or No Deal is very enticing. It's a little serious for me. I love dealing. I do deal. too. I love to watch it. I don't think it'd be a good contestant. You should go on baggage. Oh, <laughs> I should go on baggage. You guys, there's a show on game show network. It's an old one. It's so good. It's so good. Oldie people, but a come goodie. Out, people come out with literal like suitcases and they reveal <laughs> their baggage. Like <laughs> their red flags. Re- their red flags round by round. And whoever has like the least baggage gets to go on the date with the per like there's one person like main person right um what would your baggage be oh where do i start (laughs) and no guys like these baggage things it's not just like um i like pineapple on my pizza no no this is like like, i like i I, wear diapers to bed yes like and and they're real and the people are like and once it's revealed you have to explain yeah like it's not like you just they're just like, oh, There's it was Alex and move on. Crazy shit. You have to explain. <laughs> People are like, I still have my placenta, which honestly, I think that's really cool. I wish I still had my placenta. Anyway, I like stuff <laughs> like that though. Like really, um, just really things. jarring things. What would my, I don't know where my baggage would be. We don't need to go there. Okay. We, we just don't. Yeah. That's not <laughs> even fun. Okay. Honestly, we've been recording for three hours at this point. I don't know. Today has been so weird today is wednesday april 13th if i know you're listening to this monday and beyond but please like try take yourself back back. don't you agree that wednesday april 13th was your it was a weird day were you exhausted were your electronics acting weird our internal clock is off like it the dogs are hella barking like for no reason right now yeah our ring camera is not working like everything's like everything's moving really slowly yes today Dragged, dragged on. on i did so much shit today oh my and like God. not even like a productive like just the amount of things that like there was so much time for yeah. it yeah today felt like two and a half days long yes approximately 2.5 days long wonder why so please if you felt that too last week let us know 
But um, aside from that, I I think we can agree we all learned a lot this episode. So fun. I felt like class. It really did. I really loved this. I hope you guys liked it too. Um, happy 420. It's on Wednesday. Or happy April 20th. Whatever you prefer to <laughs> um, celebrate. Anyway, I'm going to go. Alex is going to come with me. Should we play cards? <laughs> yeah, we're going to for sure play cards. And we're going to watch the ultimatum. Ooh, and the new Kardashians. Oh, yeah. My mom texted me and she started. She said it was really good. I think they're... Should we watch... Should we do all three at the same time? Three different TVs. <laughs> oh, God. Did you know that they're following like their own... Yeah, it's like their own. Lines? Yeah. It's going to be so good. We're going to go watch that, though. Um, we hope you guys enjoyed. We have a follow-up episode every single Friday on our Patreon. We'll link everything down below. We also have fun little Zoom calls and whatnot. Um, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please rate us five stars. That helps us out a lot. Um, also, if you're on Spotify, I noticed today, maybe I'm late to the game. I think it's a new feature. You have a rating on Spotify. I swear we didn't have one before. Yeah, I've never thought Spotify. And now it shows up. Maybe we're late to the game. I don't what are know. we? Three stars? At uh, 4.9. Hey. So thank you to those of you who have rated us so highly. All right. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment. I love reading those. And please subscribe and turn on your notifications. We yes. love you guys so much. Have a great rest of your week. And we'll talk to you next Monday. Go get high. Bye. Bye.